our next guest. Munchausen by proxy, this wasn't a disturbing story she watched on TV. She claims this was her life. I spent my entire life believing that I was sick and that my body was broken, only to find out that I was never sick at all. I believe that I was a victim of Munchausen's by proxy and that my mother was the perpetrator. It wasn't until I was in a college class and we were talking about Munchausen's by proxy that it hit me that, oh my gosh, this was my life. I felt so overwhelmed and scared. I thought that I had severe asthma, that I had two rare blood diseases, severe back problems. I thought I had multiple broken bones and was constantly in casts and braces for those. I took a lot of medications, narcotics a lot for different reasons. I think that the sick role became my identity. When I thought that I was possibly a victim to Munchausen's by proxy, I got my records from as many hospitals as I could. I came across one record that really caught my eye. It said possible Munchausen's by proxy. I was just absolutely blown away. I came across one from when I was two years old in which I tested positive for a drug overdose with acetaminophen. My mom would report that I was vomiting. There was records that stated that I was self-inducing vomiting. I came across a record that stated that my mom was telling the doctor that I had really bad stomach pains and then she intensely looked at me and told me to show the doctors where it hurt and I half-heartedly pointed at my stomach. At one point, my mom really wanted me to take IV Rocephin. When she had believed that I had been given it, she claimed that it worked, but she wasn't aware that I had really been given a saline placebo. When I was growing up, I was really close with my mom. It was me and her against the world. I was in pageant when I was four years old. I ended up getting runners up, and my mom got best mom award. I get angry and kind of disturbed when I think back to the fact that my mom won best mom award because little did anybody know she was making her daughter sick. I feel in a lot of ways like I didn't get to have a childhood at all. Please welcome Jordan to the show. Thank you for being here. And can I ask you the, the first age at which you realized maybe I was a victim of this? Yeah, I just realized that I believe I was a victim of this um, last year in May. So I'm 24 now, so I was only 22 when I first realized that this was my life. There had been different signs and symptoms as I grew up where I kind of thought maybe things were a little off, but once I got my medical records and was just flooded with it all, it was, it was all right there in front of me. And you mentioned your medical records. I'm just gonna go through a few of these so everyone watching can get a sense for what Jordan went through. First report, mother states that the emesis shoots out of her mouth and said it is like the girl on the exorcist that vomited very hard. On examination, she has no tenderness. She doesn't appear to be dehydrated. She hasn't had any breathing problems. Her monitor hasn't gone off. Moving on, the physician wrote, I came into the room today and mother was hovering over her child. Mother greeted me cheerfully stating, she's Miss Throw Up. A lot of fevers, reported fevers. In this case, multiple reports detailing fevers from Jordan's mother, but a normal temperature when Jordan was in the doctor's office or hospital. One state, she had a history of 105.3 degrees. On exam, her temperature was 99.8 degrees. The list goes on and on. Jordan's medical records suggest she may not have had the blisters or lesions that were reported by her mother. In this case, it reads history of fevers to 107.2 during the night per mom's report with additional blistering rash that I am unable to see only 12 hours later.